Hey guys, this is The Minds of Lilith and thank you for joining me today as I take a deeper look into the most recent episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 5, Episode 13. I am not doing a full episode recap as there are plenty of other content creators who do a great job covering the show. Instead, I'm going to focus on specific segments of the episode that I believe could be used as teachable moments for myself and the audience. So the first thing I want to say is um, you teach people how to treat you and you teach people how to respond to you. The episode continues with Martell and Melody um, on vacation in Florida with the family. Miss Marlene is there, Miss Van is there, their four children are there and Martell and Melody are hanging out and they're about to go on a yacht. But the weather is kind of weird, and so they may have to dock the yacht and not, you know, travel too far offshore because they don't want to get caught in the storm. So anyway, um, yeah, during the trip, Martel and Melody begin to discuss the past, and the past is very triggering for Melody. A few weeks ago, I stated that it was too soon for Martel and Melody to go on this vacation together. Because their marriage and divorce has been so tumultuous and violent, I think the idea of vacationing together was too premature because I don't think either of them are ready. Both Martel and Melody are still easily triggered by each other, okay? And it's difficult <laughs> to watch them have a conversation because you're waiting for one person to say the wrong thing before the other one overreacts or becomes very defensive. Um, in response to whatever the other person is saying, right? And for months, when I first started my channel, I talked about Melody having post-traumatic stress disorder. And I talked about how some people, or most people who have been abused by narcissists, uh, they become hypervigilant. Their trauma makes them very defensive and very distressful and very paranoid about people, places, things, and situations that they'll be encountering henceforth after the relationship ends. Uh, so trauma is not does not end when the relationship is over, okay? The pain and the disappointment that Melody felt when she watched her entire life collapse in front of her because of her husband after years of being abused by him verbally. If we remember in um, season three, Melody stated that uh, she and Martell could barely celebrate their first year anniversary because of Martell's disrespect and his foul mouth, right? So this is something that they've been going through throughout their entire relationship for years, for over a decade. Martell taught Melody how to respond to him. So Melody is now very defensive around Martell. She's afraid to trust him. She's very adamant about making sure that Martell knows that there is no possibility that they'll ever be together again. A part of me feels like she's trying to convince herself, not because she actively wants to be with him, but because Martell is naturally a very charming person. I don't think Melody wants to be with him right now. I think that though, um, because Martell was able to convince Melody to return to him in the past because he's very charismatic, on several occasions, I mentioned how charismatic Martel was to the extent that he convinced Arion to remain in an affair with him for five years, right? She was loyal to him for over seven years, even after the baby was born, and he was showing evidence of not having any respect or regard for her whatsoever. He called her a peasant on national TV, and he was still able in to endear himself to her to the extent that she had a baby by him less than two years later. Okay, so Martel's very charming. He knows how to speak softly and say the right things to get a woman to trust him, to get a woman to open her heart to him. And who better to know this than Melody? Melody knows this better than anybody else because she's left Martel several times before. And after Melody would leave the home to go to a hotel to escape Martel's abuse, he always managed to say and do the right things to make her feel as if he had changed. He wanted to be a better man. He was apologetic. He was remorseful, right? So a part of me feels like Melody has to keep this wall up to protect herself from Martel because she's afraid of him being able to slip into the cracks again. Melody consciously, mentally is over Martel, but the heart is a very strange thing. There's a reason why she stayed married to this man for so long. She saw something in him that was endearing and valuable. 
I'm not saying that Melody wants to be with him now. She's not attracted to him now, right? That's because she has strong barriers up. But if they get back into the same old routine that they had while they were married, it is quite possible that Martel has the gift of gab enough to not get Melody to want to be with him again, but Melody would begin to trust him again. And that is why she invited him on this trip because he started to act <laughs> and say things that would um, indicate that he's trying to do better, that he's doing the work to heal and be a better man, right? That he wants to co-parent healthily with her, okay? So Martel's very seductive. You cannot underestimate a person who has the gift of gab, who is relatively attractive, who's charming, and who knows how to read energy. Melly is very defensive, not because she hates Martel and she wants to make his life a living hell, but first, she knows that she can't trust him because when she trusted him before, during their marriage, when he cheated several times, right? He cheated four or five years. She kept believing him and taking him back when he said he was sorry. Do you know the amount of damage you do to somebody when you keep breaking their trust time and time and time again? So every time, you know, Melody took Martel back and Martel would betray her again, she would have to heal all over again. And when you keep injuring a person in the same place, they become calloused and cold and hard and somewhat cruel, right? And so Melody wasn't being cruel to Martel. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is she is trying to keep, she's pushing him away. I have to keep pushing this person away because I know his gifts. I know his strengths. I know that he has the ability to seduce me into thinking that he's a, a better person. He has the ability to convince me that I should trust him, that I should have him close to my heart. Not necessarily in a romantic sense, but even as a friend. Even as a friend, that's a sacred space to be in, okay? Friend means I trust you. Friend means that you will protect me. Friend means that you have my best interest at heart, right? Friend me doesn't always mean sex, but the fact that Martel was able to convince Melody that everything was all good, right, between them, in spite of everything he had done, <laughs> In spite of everything he had done to her for years, um, he his behavior toward her made it easier for her to delude herself too. And I'm going to explain why I say this. The fact that Melody does not want to talk about the past, and rightfully so, um, but the fact that she can't talk about the past yet shows me that she hasn't healed yet. Martel still easily triggers her. It's going to take her a while to fully heal from the situation and she should respect the process instead of trying to rush through it and force a friendship with Martel when neither of them are ready yet. Their, their divorce was so awful from an objective standpoint. As someone who was in the audience, their divorce was so awful. I, it would be impossible in my opinion for these two people to heal within two years without them both going to therapy together. I think it was a good idea for Melody to suggest that they attend co-parenting classes together. They were trying to do this when they first got divorced, right? And if you guys remember, when Melody tried to console Martel and she reached out to rub on his shoulder when he started tearing up because he was ashamed because he did not have enough money to take his kids out to do the activities they would normally do because he was broke. What did Martel do? He said, get off me, Mel. Whenever Melody tried to extend some warmth and receptivity and love and compassion towards Martel, he either rejected it or used it as a weapon against her. He would use her vulnerability against her to force her to accept certain things that was not acceptable, right? So when Melody would forgive Martel and take him back, he would use that as an opportunity to try to train Melody or chip away at her self-esteem so that she could accept him having an affair. So every time uh, she took him back, he would push the line even further. Every time she let him back in her life, the abuse became more egregious. He became more bold and arrogant with it because it's like she ain't going nowhere. So whenever Melody would try to forgive Martel and show grace to him, she's learned that he uses that against her. So now that Martel's acting nice and he's behaving on this trip, he did a good job of deactivating his triggers. Melody still can't trust him though. She knows that in the past, when she's tried to be open to him and she listened to him and she was receptive to him, 
And she forgave him for his wrongdoings to the point where she gave him a whole new baby after finding about, out about his affair with his mistress, right? For five years that he was cheating with her. Melly forgave him, gave him a whole baby. They were starting over a whole new leaf. They went on carriage rides together. Martel gave her a push present, right? They were trying to show the world that they had come through a very tough situation and they were sticking it out together. What did Martel do after that? He doubled down and got his mistress pregnant while the family was quarantining together, right? Martel was complaining about Melody going to work all day, not being home with the kids, not cooking and cleaning. Now with the quarantine with COVID, they're in the home together all day and Martel is still sneaking out to be with his mistress because Melody kept taking him back time after time after time. He thought that she was desperate and broken enough to accept the affair with his mistress. He had no intention of leaving the mistress as long as Melody stayed married to him. This is what ended up happening to Melody after she kept opening her heart to him time and time and time again. Every time Melody, you know, forgave him and gave him an inch, he would try to take her whole arm. He would try to take her dignity. He had her competing with his mistress at some point because that's how many times Melody had forgiven him. She had forgiven him so many times that at some point, she started to actively compete with the mistress, right? I'm gonna give him more oral sex because that's what he said he wanted and that's what he was getting from his mistress. Let me make sure that he's not missing anything to the point where he needs to get it from somewhere else. And Melody even said that she finally left Martel when she realized that he had no intention of leaving the mistress. So every time Melody forgave Martel for his infidelity and took him back, he was training her. He was teaching her how to share him, okay? Martel was teaching Melody how to share him, and that became an issue. That is when Melody said, oh, I get it now. You have no intention of stopping this. This is fun for you. This dysfunction and this pain that you're bringing into my life is enjoyment for you. It's entertainment for you. You can't really love me. That's impossible. You want me to share you with somebody else. And you always wanted me to do that from the beginning. So every single time that you asked me to forgive you, you were lying. Because as long as this chick was willing to be your side piece, and as long as you had me in your life, you had no intention of stopping the game. So no matter how many uh, sweet words and poems and flowers and emails and, and apologies and text messages that he gave to Melody, he had no intention of stopping his behavior. He was weaponizing Melody's love for him against her. And that was when she realized that I can never trust this man with my heart again. But Melody is also aware that Martel, like many narcissists, is a very persuasive speaker. He convinced two beautiful women to fight for his affections for years, for five, six, seven years. He had Arion in some sort of spell, right? So no matter what the red flags were, Arion was willing to believe everything that Martel said because Martel has a way with words and he knows how to read a person's energy to get what he wants from them. So yes, it seems like Melody was picking at Martel, right? She was defensive, but for good reason, because she knows that by not being defensive, it opens the door to Martel walking into her heart again, period. You cannot convince me otherwise. I'm not saying that Melody consciously wants to be with Martel, but energy is a totally different thing. If Melody was completely over the situation, she would not be as easily triggered by Martel as she has been, okay? And again, I'm not saying that Melody wants Martel back. No, I'm saying that she knows the power that he has with not just her, women in general. That is his gift. So Melody has to be very strong and very stoic and very determined to keep her emotional distance from Martel. She's using her words to block out her emotions. That's why whenever Martel even alludes to the idea of her doing something for him or him being attracted to her still or the good old days, right? It, the idea is it's triggering to her because that's a soft spot for her too. The memories that Martel and Melody share together aren't just his memories. She has memories too. 
right? And they have shared experiences together also. So she is right to rebuff his attempts to rehash the past because that's the technique that he uses to get Melody down this emotional rabbit hole where she starts to reminisce about their relationship, the good times they had, the good memories, the feelings she used to have for him, the way he made her feel when things were good. Some people miss those things. They miss the vacations, the experiences, the first, the firsts, right? First baby, first vacation, first successful business deal, first wedding anniversary. There are many firsts that they shared together as young people. And those memories are still triggering for Melody. And Melody is still very angry because he ruined everything. He did. And so in order for her to move forward her life, she had to stop rehashing the past. And she's like, you know, like many people who have survived trauma, they're like, I'm going to fake it till I make it. It's as simple as that. She would not be as easily triggered by Martel if she did not still have a soft spot for him. Doesn't mean she wants to fuck him again and be in a relationship with him again. No, but it's obvious that she wants some relationship with him, right? Some friendship, some connection because he's the father of her children. It will be easier for them. And on top of that, she misses her friendship with him. She misses her relationship with him. And if you couple that with the fact that Martel's a very seductive, charming person, she's being very defensive to protect herself from falling into the rabbit hole and the trap again. Because now it's almost like being brainwashed. It's almost like being brainwashed. You know somebody ain't shit, but at some point you get used to them, right? You look forward to seeing them even. This is called Stockholm Syndrome. I know you ain't shit, but I'm used to you. And the, the familiarity of your abuse is more comfortable to me than the unknown experiences of not having you in my life, right? The, the feeling of having the void that something's missing here. I'm used to this happening. I'm used to this pattern. I'm used to this routine. I'm used to this experience. Even if it wasn't fully positive, human beings are still animals that can be conditioned and brainwashed into accepting uh, circumstances and situations and relationships where we're treated like crap because those relationships do serve a purpose for us. What that purpose is, is relative to each person. It's not the same universally. But Melody was getting something out of her relationship with Martel. And she may be missing whatever she was getting from that relationship. So Martel is in a position to now use the void that's been created by their divorce to seduce her into opening up her heart to him again, to trusting him again, okay? So as I said before, um, Melody is on the road to healing. It's not over yet. She's, you know, she's made some progress, a lot of progress, but you're not gonna fully be able to heal until you acknowledge that there's still more healing to do, right? And sometimes we try to rush the process because it's very painful to be there all the time. I can't be in a, a state of grief and regret and remorse and missing someone when I have four kids to take care of, when I have businesses to run, when I have money to make, when I have a brand to build, when I have a vision to execute, when I have new potential suitors trying to get to know me. I cannot afford to feel this shit. It is too painful, okay? And so when Melody and Martel were together, like I said, they looked good together, the kids were all happy. I know that tugged at our heartstrings, but what I think is happening is like this sort of, she's fighting with herself because when you have been with someone for so long, for over a decade, this was her first real serious relationship. When you have been with someone for this long and they've left such an imprint on you, you've been conditioned to respond to them a certain way. Melody's used to taking Martel back after his pleading and begging and all this other stuff, but she has to remind herself constantly that going back to the same place emotionally with him is not the way to go. She has to, I think she has to constantly do it because she doesn't want to live there. She doesn't want to live in a trauma that she's been through. So it's easy for someone like Martel to come along and act as if it doesn't exist, as if it didn't happen. Or it's easy for someone like Martel to downplay it and to overlay those negative feelings and experiences with positive memories. So now that Melody has stepped away from the trauma, she hasn't gotten rid of it. She stepped away from it. She's in a different room. Martel's trying to fill the room that she's currently in that's a part of her current reality. He's trying to fill the room with the positive memories and experiences that they had together so that she can ignore the trauma that he's put her through. And Melody knows this. So she constantly has to remind herself by pushing back at him of what has happened. She is using the memories of the negative experiences to, to keep reminding her and him 
of how they got to that point. Because I believe that it was very easy for Martel to deceive Melody. It's e it was easy for her to see the best in him, to want the best for him. She fell in love with him relatively quickly, right? And Martel is a very, again, charming person. So she has to use these, uh, the negative memories and the clapbacks and the little jabs that she throws at him. That's not just for him, that's for her too. I have to remind you of how we got here. I gotta remind me too, because right now, you are speaking to me the way you used to when we were married. When I would leave the house and go to a hotel for a few days or whatever, right? You're speaking to me the same way you used to. And I have been conditioned to keep taking you back time after time after time. So by jabbing you up, I'm reminding you and myself the situations and circumstances that have led us to this point. And that is why I, I, I feel bad for both of them. I do. I said weeks ago that this was too early for them. Melody's trying really hard to push forward because she has so much work to do and she doesn't want to stew in the grief of losing her family. I think Melody literally filed for divorce, what, two years ago? It's only been two years, okay? Yes, she's made a lot of progress. Martel has made some progress too, but I feel bad for both of them because it was they got married too young, I think. And I don't even say too young because Melody was ready. Martel got married too young. And Martel needed a lot of work before he got married, okay? I think I remember in season two, Martel mentioning that he was bullied for either being poor or something um, because his mom had to go to like secondhand shops to buy like uh, utilities and furniture and things like that. And Miss Marlene was really at home. She was working two jobs. So Martel may have been emotionally neglected and subject to abuse by, the, by society, by his community. That kind of treatment, right, being shamed um, and denigrated for your mother or for poverty or not having your father around, whatever. A child that is constantly abused and then excessively rewarded can develop narcissistic traits because the abuse creates a deep sense of shame and embarrassment and the excessive praise for being an athlete puts you on a pedestal. Now you have a big ego. Now there's a, a tug of war between shame and having a big ass ego. I'm ashamed of how I was raised and I'm ashamed of the fact that my wife is sort of like the head of the household, so I have to lie about that. But when I'm with Arion, I can be the big man in town because she looks up to me. She puts you on a pedestal. So Martel wanted both worlds. He was trying to reconcile the psychological warfare within himself with the two women. They both represented different things in his life. Melody represented where he wanted to be and Arion represented where he was. He needed a relationship with both women to calibrate his own emotions. And this is why he couldn't let either of them go because they both served a different need. It wasn't about satisfaction and sexuality. It was about, you know, Martel feeling like he accomplished something, right? Arion represented his past, where he came from. She made him feel comfortable and safe because she accepted him for who he was. Um, she didn't have high standards for him. Melody, on the other hand, was aspirational. Melody helped Martel to reach the highest levels of success. Okay, so she was something that inspired him. She motivated him. She made him look good to the public, right? All the people who were bullying him for being poor, now they could see him on the cover of magazines. They could see him on TV. They could see him, you know, um, have giving speeches with his wife. They could do all that stuff. Arion, though, reminded him of where he came from, which was easier for him because being where Melody was was hard for him. Melody is a go getter. She's somebody who's ambitious, very confident, very intelligent, very, uh, she's very business oriented. Martel wants to be that, but it's hard for him to stay there because that's not who he truly is. His energy aligns more with Arion, but he don't want to be with Arion because she reminds him of the poverty that he came from. I mentioned this over a year ago. This is what's happening. And it's very sad. It's tragic because they had a beautiful thing going, but the beautiful thing was an illusion. It was a mirage. It was something that they both created uh, to feel validated, okay? The reason why you put on such a, a front for the public about a perfect marriage is because the idea of being perceived a certain way by the public gives you some sense of validation. Many women and men who are raised in traditional Southern cultures behave this way. They feel this way about their lives. So for Melody to do what she did, it took a lot of courage and guts for her to do. But it also was um, the result of her having this epiphany that Martel was not going to change. He wanted her to share him with somebody who was awful. An awful, cruel, wicked person. Now I gotta share my life and my husband with a, a, a 
I ain't going to say what I want to say. I got to share my life with someone like that? Are you serious? That's how you see me? Now I am like the joke of the town. You got a whole baby out here. You ruined the image of what we were trying to create. On top of that, you've been disrespecting me for a decade, over a decade anyway. This situation was so nasty, but when you have Mars involved, ugh. Mars and Saturn together is always ugly at the end. Always. In the beginning, it's me and you against the world. But as we saw Whitney and Bobby, it always gets ugly. And so, you know, Martel Melody had the best of intentions. I don't think that Martel um, knew how sick he was emotionally. I don't think he's really processed the trauma um, of being a poor child who didn't have a father whose mother was barely home because she was always working and who was basically being attacked by his community. So he had no safe space. And then his ego became a safe space. Being an athlete became a safe space. The false representation of being this successful CEO, husband, father, the illusion of that became a safe space for him to nestle in. But that's not who he truly was. He was still a damaged little boy who needed Arion to validate him. That's it. Melody has a similar story, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Her energy is similar, but for different reasons. All in all, it is very difficult to watch Martel and Melody together because you can see how hard they fought to be together. Martel looked just crestfallen. He looked just awful in a sense of he just looked heartbroken on a trip, like so disappointed. Um, he just looked disappointed and I could feel the disappointment in the stream. Even though I said last week, I don't care about him crying, which I still, I still stick to that. <laughs> just the way his face looked, he just looked so disappointed and despondent about the way that Melody was niggling at him, right? And Melody was, I don't want to say smug about it, but she felt like she had won. She may have felt like her ability to reject Martel or to rebuff his attempts to reconcile or to rehash the past, that was evidence of her growth. I have proven to myself and to the world and to Martel how much I've grown because a year or two ago, I would have been back in his arms if he had come to me the way that he had on this trip. I would have been more receptive to him. And so this, the way that she was treating Martel was evidence of the growth that she's made within herself which is a good thing but then it comes off as excessive because people don't understand what she's been through why do i want to understand um they they don't appreciate how much trauma she's endured and they don't appreciate how it feels to constantly forgive someone who repeatedly breaks your heart every single time you open your heart to them do you know how hard it is to forgive a man for cheating on you for years and then to do it more than once. And then every time you're like, okay, we're going to start all new again. I got my family back. I'm safe. And then this person just rips the rug out from under you every single time. That's devastating. That is devastating. You guys remember how thin Melody was in season one. I thought she looked awesome. But you remember how thin she was in season one. Uh, Melody likes to eat. That means she wasn't eating. Okay. She wasn't eating for a long time. So she's been through hell before the show even started. And instead of Martel using the show as a vehicle to get his life back on track, he decided to double down. And he tried to force Melody to basically accept his affair, his cheating, his betrayal, right? And then he gave her a baby on top of that. And then threw the mistress in his face, like he did everything wrong. And it is very difficult to, for a woman, for anybody, I, I, if I love you so much, I'm willing to let you stab me in the back over and over and over again. I've damn near sacrificed my dignity for you. That's how much I loved you. You damn right. Every time you talk to me after I've left the situation, every time you talk to me, I'm going to remind you of what you did to get us here. Because I got to remind me too. Because I still have a soft place in my heart for you. Not because I want to be with you. Right? Romantically. I don't, that's not what I think is happening here. But she wants to be cool with him again. I'm going to say this too, because I know how Scorpios work. I'm a Scorpio myself. Listen, Melody enjoys the idea of rejecting Martel. It makes her feel good, in my opinion. I think it makes her feel good to talk about both of them dating other people <laughs> because it's evidence that she's over him. It's like, I'm so over you that I am okay with you being with a whole nother person right in front of me. And I don't give a goddamn, right? And 
that's fair because Martel had a whole affair for five years with a woman and had a baby on her. There's nothing more that he can do to her. That is what Melody is saying when she says things like that. There's nothing more that you can do to me to hurt me. I am okay with seeing you with another woman in front of my face because guess what? Your mistress was calling me on the phone and telling me what my man was doing to her. Okay? So there's nothing. My heart has been shattered and broken to the point where, you know, it's a wrap. And I enjoy seeing you squirm at the idea of me not giving a fuck about who you're dating. It's, it's empowering. This is how Scorpio snake. Okay. And how do I know this? I've done this myself. So one time <laughs> I was dating a guy, right? And he, I found out he was cheating on me. Okay. And I was like, okay. So I found out he was cheating on me. And um, then he tells me that the girl that he was cheating with, he broke up with her. So he wanted to reconcile with me. I know that's crazy, right? I was like 20 at the time. So he tells her he wanted to get back to me. And then I called the girl up and I was trying to get them back together. So he was at my house and I was, you know, I was like, what's the girl's number? And I called the girl, right? And was trying to convince her to take my ex-boyfriend back. I did that in front of him because I want him to know that I don't give a fuck about what you're doing now okay and it wasn't a malicious thing because i i was serious about that but i want you to see how done i am with you because i've given you ample opportunity to get your shit together and you trounced all over me so now i'm not gonna get mad i'm not gonna yell or scream i'm gonna call your girlfriend up to make sure that she knows and you know that you don't have to sneak around anymore you're all hers you're free to go right now at the time like i said i didn't know that he was cheating so when i found out that's when i corrected the situation and i let him know in unknown and no uncertain terms that he could be with the girl right and i called her in front of him and he got mad and said that i didn't care about him enough and then i said i guess not because scorpios like other signs not just scorpios are very possessive okay when we like somebody even if uh <laughs> they don't know yet <laughs> we are possessive of the person that we're attracted to right some of us are and yeah so we kind of get our tentacles or our stinger into someone before we've even established a relationship with them and then we get them to come over to our side by sheer magnetic attraction okay no spells or root work needed so anyway yeah melody enjoyed torturing martel by letting her know that i'm going to be dating other people and you're going to be dating other people and we are going to have a happily ever after situation where we can both co-parent and be friends let's just be friends melody friend zoned martel and that hurt him because he wanted an opportunity to get back with her that's just what it was right even though he was at the time schmoozing with sheree and he was still messing with arion um, because he wanted to triangulate again. That's how, that's the game. Um, he did not like the fact that she was empowered enough to be comfortable enough to see him with another woman right in front of her. That shows you I'm done though. But again, she still has memories of Martel. Okay. And she was doing that to further push him away, not just for him, but for her too. If I say this out loud and I declare that you are community property, that means I'm really done with you. That means there's no turning back here. And most Scorpios don't say shit that they don't mean. Yes, sometimes we change our mind, but we meant what we said, okay? So unfortunately for Martel, he had to fuck around and find out. And I think at some point Martel will get frustrated about the fact that Melody will not take him back. He's used to her taking him back right he's used to being able to say something and do something to fix the situation so that he gets what he wants at the end of the day sending her pictures sending her love letters in the email apologizing to her profusely everything that he's doing now after the divorce he was doing while he was cheating with arian okay for years and it meant nothing and melody knows this so while martel may be sincere this time it's too late i accept your apology but okay what that mean what that mean? It means nothing. So, on to Maurice and Marcel. Um, this scene made me cry because even though I said last week I don't care about Martel crying, I don't like seeing men cry in these kind of situations. I could see the fear and the helplessness in Maurice's face. And I have been in similar situations where a loved one was suffering from a serious chronic illness and you know I'm usually a very strong person and I don't share my feelings with anybody but I've had I had to go to my mom one day and just like break down to her and hug her and I don't really hug anybody like that 
I just had to, I was just so devastated um, about not being able to fix the situation. The worst thing you can do is worry unnecessarily. Worrying won't fix nothing. It just makes things worse and then you begin to catastrophize everything and there's no peace of mind. Uh, you have to make peace with whatever the outcome is for better or for worse. That's what I had to learn the hard way. And so yeah, um, I felt really bad for, for Maurice. I know that this is going to be a battle for him. He's constantly thinking about his wife's mortality. Um, hopefully he doesn't rebel against fate and time by doing things that some men do when they want to feel young again, right? By being messy and so on. So he's showing up the way that um, he should at this time as a husband. And I'm very proud of him for that. And hopefully he has a strong support system that can give him the strength and the clarity and the confidence um, and the peace of mind to go to this process with Kimmy without destroying himself. Uh, the grief and the guilt and the worrying can is very corrosive. Uh, at some point you stop eating properly, you stop sleeping properly, you start having nightmares and dreams about things that haven't even happened yet. It's very um, difficult. So I am hoping for the best for Maurice and Kimmy. I really, really am sending my prayers and well wishes to them and their family because it is difficult for most people to see their loved ones sick. I mean, even mothers who, whose children have caught a cold, they're worried about their babies, right? And some of the best experiences that children have is when they're sick because their mother is very attentive. She's warm and patient and nurturing and loving towards them more than she would usually be because the child is now um, incapacitated to some extent. So I, uh, again, I, I hope that Maurice has some peace now and he's, you know, things have turned a corner for both of them. And again, even if it hasn't, either way, they have to make peace with whatever happened, right? And you know, um, the serenity prayer says, God grants me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, okay? And hopefully Maurice and Kimmy have gotten to this point, all right? All right, so some announcements. Um, I watched Real Housewives of Potomac last week per the suggestion of one of my viewers. And I had some comments to say about that. Um, I recorded them yesterday, but I don't like it. I'm going to re-record it again. And I'm going to include feedback from this week's episode this time. Um, just to have a more comprehensive discussion about the things that I'm seeing on the show thus far. Also, if you want to order an astrology or tarot reading, you can go to mindoflilith.com, fill out the order entry form, submit payment via Cash App or Stripe, and I'll have your reading delivered to you within 25 business days. Again, I look forward to reading your comments. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will speak to you soon.